one and we are now live with sound. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Can everybody on there hear very good? I'm talking quiet and that's unusual. No. We're checking for audio. Making sure we're good. And I got to turn this down. I know that. You told me not to use this iron. All right. We're, we're going to, we're, we're fancying this after the bite up a little bit this year. We've got the camera set up. Christopher's got us a good setup now. Hopefully we have good audio because the last few times, uh, or a few times last year, we didn't have really great audio. Um, we're getting a good crowd of people on here. Anybody that's jumping on, make sure you share and invite this to get your friends on there. Because this is the first after the bite of the season. And I've got some good stuff to tell this week, by the way. By the way. Um, we got a lot of exciting stuff going to happen in 2020. And got some great episodes uh, that are definitely rolling out. A fantastic one tonight. And we are picking up quite a few folks. Hey, y'all, I like that. It's my kind of language, y'all. <laughs> Good old Justin Brown jumping on there. We got old Darian Craig on there. Hi, David Rice. David, you're always sharing our stuff out, and I appreciate that. Uh, John Abshire, how are you, sir? Keeping that kayak in the water? So see the cool part is I got to sit here and look at the phone and I can see the comments and I got to stare at the camera at the same time. A little bit of trickery to it. So what time are, what time is it now? It's eight o'clock. So this is the official start. So we're going to give it a few more because we've got 48 folks jumping on here right now watching us. So that's awesome. Hey, everybody that's jumping on, share and invite your friends if you don't mind. Uh, it's all about getting a crowd on here and sharing a few stories, telling about uh, the last couple weeks' episodes. We didn't start after the bite last week because of New, because of New Year's. Uh, I think my wife would have been a little bit upset with me uh, of not spending uh, the evening with the family, and uh, that's what we did. Uh, actually, just to be funny, me and Lauren, my daughter, which she's hiding on the couch over there watching this. We actually started off the year standing on our right foot when the new year dropped because we didn't want to we didn't want to start the year off on the left foot on the wrong foot. So we started the year off on the right foot. But anyway, uh, it, it's eight o'clock and it's our uh, uh, this is after the bite and. Um, you know, I enjoy doing this every week. We did this uh, last year on Tuesday nights. Uh, we did it a little earlier time. We're going to do it at 8 o'clock this year. And I think more people are at home, and and uh, we get to, you know, we'll, we'll have a little better audience uh, in the evenings. But, you know, after the bite, we like to just talk about the episodes, where we've been, who we're with, and all that. Tonight, we're going to have a guy that I fished with at Lake Gunnersville, which if you watch tonight's episode, I fished with this guy, Darian Craig. Folks, uh, this guy's a great fisherman. He's become a great friend. We, uh, we, we talk all the time, uh, him and his wife, just good people. And uh, I, I probably one of the funnest episodes of the season. Uh, there's two or three of them that are, you know, right up there. But, but Darian was just a treat to fish with. Um, but I'm going to jump back a week for a minute because we didn't talk about last week's episode. Last week's episode was pretty special because this guy had uh, done a show called The Wild Man and I actually got to fish with Turtle Man. And you talking about a treat, a guy with a personality, he doesn't stop. Uh, there's no fake to who that guy is. I mean, he is genuine, uh, loves the outdoors, and just... Uh, just a down to earth, good, just good fella. I had a ball fishing with him. Uh, we ended up catching a bunch of pickerel 
fun episode. Uh, I don't think I could have made an episode catching pickerel with anybody else other than Turtle Man. So um, that was the week one episode. So now we jump to week two with Darian Craig and we headed to Lake Gunnersville. Uh, Darian lives right there. It's his home body of water. Uh, knows it well. Got to go out there and, uh, you know, do what uh, all these guys know on these TVA lakes, and that stands for Tennessee Valley Authority Lakes. Uh, and, um, you know, we went out there and basically did what they call ledge fishing. We had a big crankbait, and we went to just catching them. Uh, you know, it looks like on camera we caught them all day long, but it was pretty tough and uh, it, for periods of time. But when we did catch them, we had a lot of fun. And like I said, we're gonna bring him on in just a couple minutes. The first thing I wanna do is tell everybody to share this, invite your friends. I'm gonna be talking about who's gonna win this big prize pack for all the folks that over the last few weeks, I put a bunch of gift cards in here, had this, we had a big thing that uh, invite all your friends and you're gonna win. We're gonna announce who that winner is a little later in the show. And then for fun, why we got Darian on here and to get you folks, uh, hi Gary Sapp, I see you jumping on here. So what I want you all to guess this week is I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hold a little piece of newspaper up here and I'm gonna show back in what year did I start promoting the call before you dig message. So this was a, I better cover that up so nobody can read it, but anyway, Back in the day, this uh, was the Kentucky Fishing Journal, and the first year that I actually was promoting the Call Before You Dig message, which you can see the little ad that I had put in this newspaper, and uh, I learned a, you know, a little bit about marketing and all those things that come along with um, you know, promoting and doing what we do, you know, sponsors and partners-wise. But I started sharing that 811 message in 2008 because that's when the 811 message came about but when did I actually put the call before you dig message what year on my boat so I want you all guessing and whoever guesses this right we got all this nice prize package up here got a bunch of baits that uh, um, from uh, Jinko Lures they sent up to us I've got uh, some direction hats I've got one called concepts these cool little speakers that we give out but I want you folks to guess in what year did I start promoting the 811 message. So I'm going to ask that a couple times throughout the night. I'll probably get Gary to get uh, Darian to give a guess at that. Uh, he um, and so guess what year? That's all you got to do. The first one to guess the correct year is going to win it. But I'm not going to tell which guess it is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to split part of this up. We're going to have two prize packages and a few others that guess it and that. We're going to let you win some of these prizes as well. But I got a bunch of direction hats. Got the 811 hat right here. Always promoting that call before you dig message. And everybody's always wanting these 811 jerseys when they see us wear them. We're going to put one of these in the prize packages. So for any of you damage prevention, safe digging folks out there that want one of these, here's one right here that you can actually win tonight so and then we also got one of these cool direction t-shirts and to tell a little story about this Christopher and Nick uh, kind of worked on this shirt everybody works on the show their names up here in this uh, uh, compass right here and just the cool back on it that tells a little bit about what the direction is and and how it got started and Christopher and like I said Nick worked on this and these are just kind of really cool shirts for me uh, because the boys put them together and and they made this up and we printed them but so to get talking a little fishing I think we're going to go ahead and bring Darian on here this guy like I said uh, uh, it, uh, just a great individual uh, he actually I got to walk towards the camera now because I got to put on a set of headphones so that I can hear him so I've got to move stations. We're getting a little fancier around this place. Right. You can probably hear Christopher talking in the background, getting Darian on. But Darian actually does um, a lot of social media work. He works for companies like Ranger Boats. Um, 
PH Marine and uh, a lot of fishing industry um, companies. And we are bringing him on here. Right now, and I get a set of headphones to be able to hear Darian. I guess and this prevents him nice. going, correct? All right, Darian, can you hear me? Can you oh, hear me yeah, now? I hear you loud and clear. So <laughs> we're getting a little fancier this year than in the past. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like this. <laughs> the, uh, the the start of it on Facebook looked really good. It looked like a, I mean, it looked like TV show now. You can tell it's on Skype, but the start of it looked really good. I tried to do a watch party, and I've never done a watch party before. So I had one screen pulled up watch party, one screen pulled up Facebook, one screen pulled up Skype. And all three of the videos had different audio going on at the same time. <laughs> and I got really confused there for a minute, so I just backed out of everything. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one that gets confused by audio or by technology. So, well, you know, Darian, um, just to, I watched your YouTube video and, and I've, I've watched the title on it where it was, you know, you put on there first time filming a TV show. So just kind of, I, I want to hear your, your difference in and how television's filmed versus like your, you know, your YouTube videos. <clears throat> yeah. So I think the main thing, just looking back on it was obviously I spend hundreds of hours in front of the camera, but it is a different dy dynamic when there's two boats or three cameras and, um, I know that I want someone else's time. I'm, and so that was kind of looking back and watching and editing that video was fun because I just edited it this week and it wasn't a, it wasn't a crazy big edit, but as I look back through the footage, I was like, dude, this, I was, I was pretty shook up. Uh, not the whole time, but I think just, just that factor of like, this is actually going to be on TV if we can catch them and which I, I figured that we would catch them, but it's still like a, you never know kind of thing. So there was there was the pressure of catching the fish, but also the pressure of the cameras, which I had I didn't really think there would be pressure of the cameras, but there definitely was a little bit of pressure. Well, it's always fun. I look back when I first started and then the cameras were a little bit intimidating and and now I just have fun with it and it's uh, yeah. but I but I had fun because you got out your what I guess you're going to call it the vlogging camera. And I grabbed that camera and started filming a little bit of stuff. And we actually, I think, dabbled a little bit of it into the show there. And, yep. um, you know, it's fun to see, you know, your personality and how you did with the cameras. And, uh, you know, you just made it all fun. I mean, what a great day we had and getting to know each other and, you know, and then we end up catching some fish on top of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it was funny because like the people watching the show. I know you and I know this for sure, but the people watching right now, one of the funniest things was it was really tough. Like the fishing was really, really, really tough, and we caught them. Like there was hours, maybe six or seven hours, where we did not have a bite. Um, there was no current moving. There was eelgrass everywhere, and I, they just weren't biting. Then at the end of the day, they bit, and I was like, I kept telling Mark all day, I feel bad, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I kept apologizing all day. And he said, listen, it's an hour-long show. We've, we're filming for three days. We got plenty of time. And it, then I kind of just sat back and got in my element, was like, all right, this doesn't have to be bam, 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 because it looks like it was on the TV show. And you, you hinted at that a little bit on the show, and you're like, listen, guys, this might look good, but it really wasn't that good. Um, we did have a lot of fun. We ended up catching fish, but it was a lot to make that show. Um, so that was one, that was one really cool thing about it. Well, you only got 21 minutes of finished footage. And I told you at the beginning though, what makes the show is the personality. It's about the fun. It's the excitement. You know, you take the moments just like where Trey Swindle, the young man that was in running the camera boat, um, you know, Trey was over there and we're throwing beside his boat, literally, and catching those fish. 
And then when we get excited, that's really what the show's about. You know, it, the fish catching, so many guys, they worry about that. But for me, it's the personality, you having fun and us interact together. And, um, and, and you saw that with your personality. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, once you, once you uh, got me into that realization, it made it a little bit easier. Yeah. One of the, one of the comments we just got was, hey, Darian was catching all the fish while you were having overruns. <laughs> I must have been picking some yeah. line a few times. But, you know, one of the cool moments for me over and over was how many doubles we caught. Um, a bunch. <laughs> You know, in, TV, when you film it, and just like you with YouTube, you know, now you're not lying about it. You're not making up stories. You're seeing it over and over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it um, it was a good day. I mean, it ended up being a good day. It was cool, like, for y'all. I don't know how many of you watching this watched the episode or not, but um, we had this big school of fish that we found out deep that I had been catching, and they moved typically they move up and down the ledge where they moved way off to the side of it where I've never seen on that. And so I had been on this school of fish really good and waiting on Mark to get down. We're going to film the show and I knew it would be good. Um, but that school of fish just completely moved. And, uh, coincidentally I was just completely given up on the spot and where the camera boat was, which is actually my boat, Trey Swindle was in it they're sitting on top of the school. And that's what, I don't know how well you could tell that on the episode, but Trey's literally sitting there and he's pointing straight down. He's Trey scared to talk because there's a camera in his boat as well. At first we didn't really know, you know, he didn't know if he could talk or not. So I just see Trey pointing down and Mark's like, what are you pointing at? And he said, the fish are literally under my boat. And first cast over there, Mark catches one. And then we just, Y'all saw it went it went crazy, but the my what my favorite part of the whole show was the last the last fish catch of that first day, what when we I mean we doubled up on two giants, and the crazy thing about that is I th I saw three fish on the graph when we went over we saw a hump there was three big dots, and when we were graphing them I said if we can catch those three I know that they're big and literally first cast Mark catches a big one. And then I doubled up with it. It was that was a lot of fun. It was it was like icing on the cake to what was a bad day. Yeah, it, it once again the cameras make it look like a fish catching, you know, all day. But but it happened in little segments. But when we caught them, man, it was just game on. Yeah. I got look at this. That um, on the show I talked about the crankbait. Right. Look what I've got on. Were you answering Facebook? Hang on. Are you uh, are you holding the crankbait up? Yeah, I've got it. It's right here. Ah. Uh, that's the crankbait. I broke, so it broke that day. It oh, broke. The There's one treble that... hooks. Yeah, that's the one from the deal. Like that's the one that broke. I doubled up on it, and. Uh, it didn't swim anymore after that day. I was going to say, you were throwing that crankbait for a few minutes, and then we're like, something is wrong. <laughs> yeah, and literally it wouldn't swim anymore. Yep. So, that, uh, got that. That's what happens when them fish keep on and keep on. <laughs> yep. What's the comment saying? We got oh, commenters? yeah, we got a Trace. lot of them. Um, let's see here. Well, Jimmy Miller wrote, great show, love the double catch. Uh, that was another great moment when you had two fish yep. on one time. Yep. Um, and there were two. Normally, when that happens, it's like a it's a white bass and a small or large mouth. You don't a, a, most of the time it's not two bass, especially two good ones like that. And our, our old buddy Trey's on here, and he's got the finger as a emoji poking down. <laughs> now that young man's got a sense of humor. <laughs> Oh, I'm looking forward to filming with him. We came down to Gunnerville probably, I don't know, a month and a half, two months ago to film with him. And uh, it was a little tough, but we got some great stuff on him. And we're going to make a trip back down and uh, add to it. 
So I'm looking forward to getting back down there with Trey again. Yeah, Troy, um, I'm just going to tell you that one of the guys, Troy Keene, says, how big was the one you broke off? Uh, I'm just going to tell you that I have been catching these fish for a couple weeks when we filmed the show, and I caught a lot of big ones off of it. Our, you don't catch a bunch of junk fish. It's a bass school. There's only big I mean, I don't know how big it was, but I, I promise you it was a gigantor. I mean, it was – it was big. It was grown. And it's not like we have giant, like, the way it took off, it's not like we have, we don't have big stripers here. It wasn't something like you cook a big striper and he just takes you and runs off till you break off. It, we don't have big stripers here, so. And that's what I love about the camera, too. You get people's emotion when they lose a fish yeah. or something goes wrong, and that's the fun stuff to share. So. Uh, Megan Wade jumping on here. Hi, Megan. Uh, I got to film with her and her family a couple years ago, and uh, we had a ball. And Megan is one of my, she's with Georgia 811, and so she's always got me promoting that 811 message and telling people to always call before they dig. And uh, speaking of that, Darian, I love that little segment in your YouTube video that you posted up on uh, your YouTube channel. And um, that was a great little segment. So tell me a little bit about your t YouTube, your social media, and you know what you do. Yeah, so um, I have a small marketing or like social media managing agency, I guess you want to call it. Now it's developed into something much bigger than I ever thought it would be. But basically we manage the social media for a bunch of different fishing brands um, and create content for them, manage their Facebook and Instagram, make posts to them, um, reply back to the, to the fans. And um, that's pretty much what we do every day. So that's, that's what I do for a living. And then last March, I, so I'm always out on the water. I live on Gunnersville. And um, so I was like, well, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm always filming. I'm always out here anyways, creating content for these brands. And so I started my YouTube channel and it uh, it did pretty well last year. It did much better than I thought it would do. Um, so I, it, I grew it to 20, I think it just hit 24,000 today, actually, which is really cool. Because, I mean, I didn't expect to even get a quarter of that in a year. Um, so it's super exciting. YouTube's hard because you have to post a lot of videos. And, um, the difficult thing about fishing is fishing, like filming a video of anything is hard. If you trying to chug a bottle of water, filming the video and editing it and the whole thing is difficult. But then once you add the fact that you're filming a fishing trip, fishing is super hard just to go catch a fish. Like that's something that's hard to do. And so when that's your thing is making fishing videos, it's double hard because not only you got to edit and do the whole video part, but you got to, first off, got to go catch fish. So it's been a lot of fun. It's super challenging to do three or four videos a week. It's crazy. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of staying up all night, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, so, yeah, that's wow. where we're at. This year, um, one thing we're, we're super excited about, Hannah is actually um, going to work with me full-time now. So she's going to help manage some of the accounts. She's going to be a camera girl. She's going to be a probably have some of her own episodes on my channel this year and uh, just see how that goes. So we're super excited to be working together this year, and, which will make things a lot easier, And for too. all you folks that are watching and don't know Darian, Hannah is his wife and uh, – these two, uh, they they took us in our house and let us stay with them. And I just want to thank you for that because uh, it was a joy to, uh, you know, get to share a little bit of time getting to know you and personally and your wife as well. And uh, Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Um, I am going to selfishly uh, comment right now on my YouTube channel. <laughs> People need to yeah. watch yeah, it just so we got some great people. stuff out there. Um, I told you when I met you and we got talking the business end of everything. Um, your passion comes through. I enjoy your, you know, I guess what you work for TH Marine and 
you know, when you're, you're going out there and just sharing the real of all this stuff with your YouTube and hitting Gunnersville. Um, I know you crashed your drone and lost it at one point. Uh, and, you know, it's fun to watch all your videos. And so anybody that's a YouTube watcher and that, you all need to go check Darian's uh, page out. So, Darian, you need to comment and post that up there. Yep. So my old buddy Boo Whitaker is on here. Hi, Boo. Uh, this guy actually took me up to, I got to go to Indy Motor Speedway and see the NASCARs run without an audience, and it was awesome. Uh, I got to stand right there trackside. And That's awesome. See, we got Mike Tarek. Mike made a great comment tonight. Uh, my Tuesday nights are complete again. I appreciate that, Mike. Uh, Mike's one of them guys always commenting on our stuff, always sharing it out, and uh, we appreciate it. Uh, Lisa Clifton, how are you? Uh, Lisa's with LG&E. They actually um, were a partner for the first episode that we did with Turtle Man. And, um, you know, well, it's, the gas industry is always wanting people to know, you know, about their right of ways where all these gas lines run and the, you know, I'm gonna say the safety side of it, you know, not to be camping in those right of ways or, you know, digging in them. And, you know, Leeson's one of those folks that, you know, made that first episode happen. And uh, we delivered a little safe digging uh, message inside that episode. But uh, there's Darian's channel right there. Uh, it's Darian he is fishing, and uh, you definitely need to check out his stuff. And Darian, if you got any other comments or anything else you want to talk about? Well, I, um, there is something that w we need to address with the with the fans at some point in time, but I don't think we're we don't we don't have it quite nailed down yet. But there's I think. I think we can shake our heads yes on the fact that we're working on something sneaky, uh, which I'm. I, if hopefully we can make it all work, and um, I think regardless, if you have kids that are high school, college age, that Mark has definitely got something cool up his sleeve, and I, I don't even know when we can talk about it, but uh, just teasing that. Well, we're, <laughs> we're leaving a few of these 2020 um, uh, sneaks. Um, to be announcing them before long. It's, um, yeah. we got some cool stuff and Darian's gonna play a big part in this uh, announcement we're gonna make. And it's probably gonna be in February when we announce all these things. And uh, because we have, I wanna be able to give back to the fishing industry because yeah. it's been good to me. And I love to see guys, you know, your age and, even on younger, because we want them next generations to keep coming. And so we're gonna be doing something really exciting here in just a, another month. I'll put you on the spot to give a little, little pre-announcement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you just put me on the spot, but I like it because it is definitely- No, it's exciting. It's, it's good, it's super good. Um, no, I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate the, definitely the show. Like it's something that, uh, I think kind of just since we're in the industry and I'm around cameras and around, I, I just did, I guess when we were filming, didn't realize how cool it was going to be and special. I, I mean, it's something, you know, you don't get to be on a TV show every day. So that was really neat to be a part of it. I appreciate the offer and, um, definitely extend a welcome to come back and we'll shoot it again. And, um, which I don't know what all we could have done to make it better, but maybe we can have a round two and uh, just try to try to do it again. But definitely awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks to all. We, I think we've seen like 57 people watching this Facebook Live like at one time. Maybe it was a little more than that. So appreciate all of you guys. Uh, I know Mark's probably going to keep talking for a little bit longer, but yeah, I got uh, a few giveaways just I to hear us. Do. And what year do you think yep. I started promoting the safe digging message and, and, you know, now we call it 8111, but back then it was a 1 800 phone number. And uh, each uh, Christopher's over there laughing. What's so funny over there? 
I feel like I know the answer because in our edit, you in my video today, if y'all watch the video, you might have – actually, I don't think I put it in there. But you said how many years you've been working for them. So I feel like I probably don't know the answer. teach people to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but – Adam but, Savage, yeah. how are you? Uh, just saw you getting on there. But, um, well, Darian, thank you again. And uh, I, I'm not saying this because you're on there tonight, but this is probably one of my top two or three favorite episodes of the season because, man, you, what a fun time we had and just the excitement. Uh, and, and it was just awesome fish catching. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. That means a lot. I, um, I appreciate that. I think there was just watching back on that footage, there was a lot of things that cracked me. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of the whole thing, and I don't think that it made the show. I actually didn't watch the show tonight. We don't have I, uh, whatever stinking TV we got. Don't even have the pursuit channel. So I didn't even, I have watched the full episode that y'all emailed me, but there was one part that was cracking me up. We we started catching them a bunch in a row, and I called you Big Stove, and I said things were heating up. And I said, oh, we got a big stove in the house. And, like, that for whatever reason just cracked me up calling you Big Stove. Oh, but, don't anyhow, I appreciate big. it, man. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, yeah. thank you again. And uh, we're going to do a few giveaways and – I'm going to be, I'm sure, talking to you again throughout the season, and we're going to be announcing something great coming up. Yep. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Sounds good. Yep. Right. See you all later. Thank you. All right. So I get to hand you that back. And so now I'm going to walk back over here, and now I get to talk to myself the whole time. So the camera's going to chase us over here. Well, Darian, uh, what a great guy he is, folks, for – you know, the cool thing about fishing and the fishing industry is just like Darian, I, I've got to know him through fishing. You get in a boat with him, and the next thing you know, you're just great friends with him, his wife, his family. You know, you get to know people, and man, what great relationships. And, and, and me and him got some exciting things we're going to be doing coming up uh, in this 2020 season, and he kind of let the bag, a uh, little, little bit of the cat out of the bag. Uh, next Tuesday night, to jump from what we're going to be announcing later on, next Tuesday night I'm going to announce something that's pretty cool. Um, I've got uh, an announcement that I'm going to tease out through this week, and we're going to be, uh, I'll be letting that out come next Tuesday night on After the Bite. So for all of you that are on here this week, I'm going to give you a reason to come back next week. So. I need some more guesses here of what year. I, I believe that somebody has guessed it correctly, and I'm going to be giving them a part of this prize package here. And I want to, you better throw a few more guesses up here. And then just to talk a little bit about current fishing that's been going on, uh, we just went down to Dell Hollow. I was filming with John Newton. John was on here. I don't know if he's still on here or not, but John and me were at Dell Hollow with Nick. We went down there to try to film a little float and fly episode and got this big old long rod, got me a little float. Uh, we weren't too successful for because some reason we've got uh, 60 degree weather in uh, December and January here and uh, the water's just not real cold at Dale, but we had a good time down there filming with John and um, Tammy Van Meter, she was on here as well. Tammy was down there with us. There was a group of us. I had Nick down there, and we did some fishing for a few days. Had a lot of great laughs, but uh, Dale Hollow um, is here in Kentucky, and um, we're going to slide back down there, John. We're going to catch some of these floating fly fish. I got, I, gotta get, I got to catch them doing that. So anyway, to kind of, you know, I guess, you know, progress through the things I wanted to make sure we hit tonight. One, you know, this is the opening of After the Bite. I, I want to just say thanks to all the great partners that we have in the show because I wouldn't have the opportunity to, you know, film the direction, to meet all these great people, share all these different people's stories uh, if it wasn't for all these great partners. And, you know, there's a, such a long list of them. 
that I literally would have to, I got to get out a piece of paper to name them all off and I'm, I'll just hit two or three of them this week. Um, you know, one is, um, I'm going to, you know, One Call Concepts, uh, those folks uh, at OCC are always wanting us to get that 811 message out there, wanting me to talk about the importance of calling before you dig, safe digging. Uh, you know, they, they understand the uh, uh, importance of sharing that message with folks. Uh, I always come back and say everybody that knows me knows I'm a landscaper. I've got me and many other guys out there working. And, you know, if I was to go out there and hit a gas line or electric and it, you know, injure me, I, I wouldn't be able to be right here sitting in front of this camera fishing or, you know, or, or it could cost me some money. And we don't want to do that. So I just want to say thanks to OCC. I want to say thanks to, you know, like Kentucky 811, Georgia 811, Alabama 811, South Carolina 811. If I forget any of you, don't get mad. I'm doing this off the cuff. USA North 811, um, Ohio 811. All those folks that we go different places to share that safe digging message with. And then I got to go to, you know, Ranger Boats. I've had the opportunity to run that Ranger Boat uh, for years and years and years now. And folks, uh, the those boats are phenomenally built you know i just got back from ranger boats me terry mcwilliams which terry is always traveling with me um was down there to plant the quality of our boats is uh, there's not a thing changed in them from all the years ago uh to today in the quality that's in those boats um the way they're built uh, just a phenomenal product I'm always proud to be running that boat and uh, what a product it is and what a, you know, it's great to see them just keeping doing what they're doing and building the finest bass boat out there. Um, I want to thank TH Marine and Power Pole and Mercury Outboards uh, for the great um, accessories that they put on my boat. Without that outboard, uh, I wouldn't be able to run in places and go places that we go. I wouldn't be able to get stuck in the mud like I did a few weeks ago down in the Florida and push my way out of it, thanks to that Mercury outboard. Um, and then, you know, product folks like Denali Rods and Mike and, and Scott and for all their support over all these years. This was a crazy dream, as I tell all the time, to get to do the direction. And here it is, and it just it keeps kind of growing. And uh, I don't... You know, I don't care about it getting big. What I care about is having fun doing it, sharing fun stories, great guests like Darian. You know, Darian kind of told a little bit about the fishing and worried about the fishing. Folks, I really don't care if we catch fish or not. I told John Newton this at Dale Hollow. It's about a good time. It's about having fun with people. And if that's what you get from fishing, then you really got it. And that is the joy I get from fishing today is that it's fun. I get to do it with my family, friends, and with people with fun stories. And that's what the, the direction's all about. We get to share that. And then we got all these great partners that I talk about. And folks, it just doesn't get any more. Uh, you, you just, I, I don't even know what to say because it's, it's just humbling that I get to do that. And um, so in saying that, um, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to talk a little bit about the giveaway that uh, we had been putting on. We've been telling everybody to tell all their friends to go on our uh, Facebook and invite all your friends to like our page. And we had tons and tons of folks that did that. I don't even know what the total number of people were. Um, but I, I just kind of randomly scrolled down through there and I come across... Uh, uh, a lady here, Stephanie uh, Wolverton. And uh, Stephanie, we're going to be getting in contact with you. You're going to be the winner of this big old bag right here. I tucked it all away in one of these big old Bass Mafia bags. Uh, these things are cool. I bought some of these up at, uh, I think it was Cabela's the other night. And um, it, uh, these are great. But I filled it up with um, some uh, Jinko lures and some 
um, shirts and 811 hat and those gift cards and all the goodies that uh, we said we're going to give away. So this will be getting mailed out to Stephanie probably tomorrow. And then to answer the great question here, of what year did I start promoting uh, the call before you dig message? And um, let's see, how oh, there we go. We are going to go back through here. And you know, I should know this kid right here would be the first one to guess because this youngster right here I've known since before he was born and his daddy and me fished together and and he's always uh, just one of my favorite kids. I share a lot of his pictures out on my Instagram and on our Facebook and Trenton you got that right in 2002 was when I put I had the 811 message or in back then it was called before you dig it was called Kentucky Underground Protection Incorporated on my boat and I actually had the logo on the driver's console of my boat and um, had this magazine article had an ad put in there and man I was that was big timing it for me back then and of course here I am all these years later still promoting the message still making people aware of the importance of safe digging and here it is and uh, so Trenton I'm going to be boxing you up a bunch of goodies over here and sending them to you. And let's see if anybody else guessed the right year. If somebody wants to type 2002 on here, they might win something real. Oh, I didn't tell the answer again, did I? But if somebody else wants to throw up the right answer here and comment real quick, you can win part of this prize package. So you better comment real quick. Uh, hooray, Trenton. <laughs> so... Who else is going to put up? Okay, Greg, we're going to be sending you. Look, now we got everybody fighting over. How come all y'all are guessing the right, uh, right date now? <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to be grabbing one of you all here in a second. Actually, Greg, and uh, we'll be sending you a prize package as well. And um, folks, what I want to say is, is you know, uh, I appreciate each and every one of you for getting on here for After the Bite. You all supported the direction because... Without people, there isn't a show. It's what makes the show work. And it, um, as I say all the time, I'm just humbled to get to do this. And I guess the exciting thing is, is next week, we are going to have a great announcement on Tuesday night. Something pretty exciting. We're going we're gonna to have some folks that are going to be joining our team of partners. And we're going to be announcing who's coming on board with us and uh, telling a little bit about them. So we're excited about that. And next week's episode. Well, you know, I always try to have a few episodes that we know are going to be some fish catching. I like to have some episodes that are about people and telling great stories. And then I like to have a few episodes that are just fun. Who knows what it's going to end up and how it's going to be. But next week's episode, folks, I got the chance to go to Vero Beach, Florida, to a place called Vero Trophy Bass Lakes with a guy that uh, is uh, pretty amazing with the rod and reel, uh, Brent Anderson. And uh, I actually went back and filmed again with Brent uh, here just recently in, uh, in the last, I guess, month and a half or so ago. and. Uh, of course, this place will not let you down. So if you haven't seen next week, or if you're, you know, if you get the opportunity, make sure you're watching next week. Brent Anderson at Vero Beach, at Vero Trophy Bass Lakes. You can look him up and look that place up. Uh, Brent, uh, it's always, um, you know, he's always needing people to go down and uh, fish with him. Uh, he is a guide down there. He guides at home. I guess comes back up to Pickwick and guides as well. But, uh, you know, that's how he makes his living, and uh, man, the guy's a lot of fun, and that's going to be an exciting episode. So here's how we're going to wrap up after the bite. One, I'm going to start every week. I'm going to have a little tip or something kind of fun that I'm going to tell about. And, you know, I got to go up north, and I fished with a guy named Kyle Metzger. And, you know, this bait right here is an aggravating bait to have on a rod and reel. And if you 
you're familiar with it, it's an A-rig, umbrella rig, I don't know. Some states you can only have three hooks, some you can have five, you gotta know that. But, so this big old bait is always on a big old rod, you know, and I'm throwing it on this. This rod here is my, it's an N3 and it's their seven foot eight extra heavy Denali rod to give Denali a little plug. But my tip for this is, is this big old bait is always in there and you hook it on there, you try to put it in your rod box, it's a mess. So I see all these guys got different containers to hold them, different things. But Kyle Metzger showed me the neatest trick. He went and got these silly little things here. And Christopher, can you zoom in or is that gonna? Hold on, I'm gonna focus this line on. Okay, hold on, we don't use, we, I gotta do technology. So Christopher's gonna zoom in on this. I ordered these little, they call them gear ties, and these things are cheap, but watch this. You take this A-rig, and you grab it with your hand, and you just hold it, and these things, they're kind of like bread ties. You just grab it, and you wrap it around it, and this thing is no longer a mess. You can store all your extra A-rigs like that as well, rig them up. Now you don't have a mess out of that A-rig when you put it in your box. That's my simple little tip. I just jumped online and ordered these things. I want to say they were four bucks or six bucks and there's six of them in there or 12 of them in there and I got the six inch length ones. But that's my fun tip. I'm going to try to take every week on after the bite and share a little tip of uh, something that I find simple and easy to make your fishing a little easier or a little more organized and uh, maybe a few of the tips maybe we'll share something to catch a few more fish but uh, so anyway um, that's after the bite join us next week we'll be out on here Tuesday evening eight o'clock for after the bite Tuesday night 7 p.m. on pursuit channel they have some other rerun times as well that you can watch the show but go to our YouTube page, like our YouTube page, folks. We're trying to grow the YouTube. We're trying to grow our Instagram, our Facebook's just growing all the time. Uh, but get on there, like all our social media platforms. And I just want to say thanks to everybody who supports us. And uh, that's After the Bite. I'm Mark Stowe. Thanks for always watching The Direction. And, well, that's a wrap.